Hey everybody, it's Dr. McVeary here with another update in our series on emergent literacy. And today we're going to be talking about phonological and phonemic awareness. In our last video, we really went through the differences between emergent literacy and conscious about print and talk about the alphabetic principle. Now we're going to be talking more about sounds. If you think about it, like phonos, that is a Greek root for sound. So when we're talking phonological awareness, it's the understanding that the spoken language, it's made up of units of sounds, such as sentences, words, and syllables. And so you have to recognize those with your ear. We're not really talking about reading. We're really just talking about sounds and being able to break up those units of sounds in forms of meaning. Phonemic awareness, that fits under the umbrella of phonological awareness. And that's the understanding that language, that words are made up of individual phonemes being able to hear and identify and manipulate those phonemes. And so what do we, when you think about the difference of, you know, phonemes, those are the number of sounds. Like there's 26 letters in the alphabet, but we have about 44 different phonemes, 44 different sounds. Now, combine those together and it's 500 different spellings. Uh, why that happens? Well, we'll get to that in phonics, but it has to do with a lot of rise and fall across of the English speaking world. But in terms of phonemes, you're really just focusing on those 44 sounds and reinforcing those sounds. So when you're teaching, what are you doing? Well, you're doing things like identifying and counting words, identifying and counting syllables, identifying and making rhyming words. Like think about the the, the, the name game. Uh, Greg, Greg, Bobeg, Banana, Fana, Fobeg, P, Five, Omeg, Greg. You know, that's, that's really in a way the next that's rhyming words. But that really comes down to identifying, blending, segmenting, deleting, and substituting phonemes. In the name game, I just substituted the first phoneme in a word. Take the word cat. How many letters? Three. How many syllables? One. How many phonemes? Cat. Cat. So that's the difference really between a syllable and a phoneme is phonemes represent the individual sounds in a word. So when we go back to thinking about identifying, that's just, can you find, can you point to the first letter in the sound? Or you wouldn't point to the letter. Uh, what, what, you'd point to the picture. What picture starts with the sound ball? And maybe the picture of a ball, a cat, and a car. You know, and so they're identifying that sound. Can you, uh, and then, then after that, you move on to blending. And with blending, you basically put a number, you can do something like where you put a number in a box with a picture that finds the sound that has the, the p, u, e, n, t. So it's smashing it together. So when you segment, you pull apart a word. B, u, e, n, t. Blend. Then you can blend it together. Blend! You smash it! Pull apart, smash! Kids love pulling apart and smashing words. So that's really, you can really use phonemic awareness. It's not, it only takes seven minutes a day. So really what you do is you do it as part of your transitions, your entrance subs, your exit subs. All those parts that, about classroom organization where you use the curriculum to improve your classroom organizations. And in the early childhood classroom, phonemic awareness is a great tool for doing this because it's these quick little games that you can play with kids and it only takes seven minutes of instruction to improve their phonemic awareness. Then you can kind of move on to segmenting. And here, you're trying to divide up the words. And so what you can do is give kids like a chart, like two, three, four, or five, and tokens, or they can count them out. And so you give them the word book. And then they go, okay, book, book, three phonemes. Move your dot to three. What a board game! You know, they can draw things, and then they got the other person read it. It's all based on pictures. So you can turn that into a game. So phonemic awareness is definitely something that you can turn into a lot of fun into your classroom. Um, then there's deletion. You know, like, what happens, you give a picture of feet. What happens to feet if I remove the f sound? Feet becomes eat. And you can kind of maybe make this matching game. You can just do it out loud. Uh, you can have a lot of fun with just, you know, uh, thinking about deletion there. Substitution, well... You know, anybody here of uh, Robbie's like apples and bananas or apples and bananas? I like to eat, eat, eat. Apples and bananas. I like to oot, oot, oot. Ooples and bananas. I like to eat, eat, eat. Apples and bananas. 
all you're doing there is substituting phonemes. So it's a great different way to build that into your lessons. So we started last week with really talking about alphabetic knowledge and, and recognizing the names and sounds of letters accurately, but also by the sounds as well. And then letters in, in those sounds letter relationships that are organized systematically, those provide explicit instruction and, and you practice and review that alphabetic principles. But when children are blending sounds, when they're sorting word sounds into patterns, when they're building words by smashing sounds together or manipulating words, that's really phonemic awareness. The big key to know the difference between phonemic awareness and phonics, which we'll start next week, is if it involves, if you can cover your eyes and still do it, well, if you're looking at a card, it's hard. But you don't need to see any letters for phonemic awareness. You're just using your ears. Once you're using your ears and your eyes, to associate a letter to a sound, now you're talking phonics. But if you're just talking sound relationships, that's phonemic awareness. Um, so like with replication, what, what do you do? Well, a student has to repeat a sound with a, the correct articulation. If they're isolating the phoneme, the student has to identify a single sound in the word. If they're identifying it, they have to recognize the same sounds in different words. So you might say something like, what sound is the same in math, mind, and money? And the students would go, mmm. Uh, they could categorize things, like what is the odd thing out? Which word does not belong? Hug, hut, or run? Well, they all have the uh sound in the middle, so that can't be it. They all have different ending sounds. Gut, mm, that can't be it. It's got to be run. Run doesn't belong. It doesn't start with up. So next you can move on to deletion of your uh, phonemes. And we're talking about this is when they remove a sound to spoken word. What is sheep without pup? Sheep. And then you can make new words by adding phonemes. Students add a sound to a spoken word to create a new word. What word do you hear if you add s to low, slow? Now, it's very important to realize I'm not saying what word you hear if you add S to low. I'm saying the sound. As soon as you start talking letters, you're moving outside of phonemic awareness. Yes, that's part of the alphabetic principle that we talked about last week, but today we're strictly talking phonemic awareness, which means using your ears. Occasionally your eyes are associated with picture, but never with letters and words. With rhyming, students can change the preceding vowel to create new rhyming words. Hit, bit, fit, kit, mit, um, ranch, blanch, you know, uh, just have rhyming games. And this is something fun that you can do with kids. You can have challenges. You can come up with most rhyming games. You can, you know, um, count them. You can do, it's just a lot of things you can do. With segmenting, counting, students separate spoken words, individual sounds. You can use something that's called a, a Lonquin uh, boxes, where you basically have, and they move in tokens for the number of um, phonemes that they hear. They could blend sounds together, like we talk about smashing things together. Ba, a, n, d, band. And then they could substitute words like cat and pee becomes pat to uh, tap. And what's the new word? And you just sit there and you just fool around and make a lot of new words. Why do we teach phonemic awareness? Well, we know it's a great predictor of later performance. It's a good predictor of phonological or, or uh, of phonics and spelling in later grades, and it only takes seven minutes a day across the board. So it's not like you're going to have a phonemic awareness period. You know, it might be a station that you do at your during uh, your daily station time that students would then rotate to a phonemic awareness station. Uh, it might be like I said, I like to actually use it as my transition times in my classroom organization plans, and then I might call up, I might label tables by sound with a buh table come to the line. Will the tuh table come to the line? If you have a cup sound in your name, you may go line up. So there's lots of ways to reinforce that phonemic awareness into your everyday activities. And that's it, folks. That's a brief overview on phonemic awareness.